most favorite one is EOS, EOS. So the way I describe this is that this is going to be like when Windows launched for the first time. The transformation that Windows had for the computing market, it suddenly blew the doors open in terms of how many average people could use a personal computer. But the reason that happened was because for the first time, any average developer could write applications that would run on a PC. So the level of expertise required to create a, an application or computer program dropped dramatically when Windows was launched because Windows took care of a lot of the complicated um, software level stuff, communicating with the hardware and so on of the PC, which the developers didn't have to do anymore. They could just write the app for Windows, so it was this insulating layer. And that meant that tons of developers could write tons of apps, and that then meant there was tons of choice for the user. That very same thing is what EOS is going to be. So if you imagine the PC hardware and then Windows is the insulating layer, then the apps are built on top of that, then the users use the apps. Well, say the blockchain is like the computer hardware, which at the moment, all the developers are having to interact with directly. EOS is going to create this insulating layer, almost like an operating system for the blockchain. That then means that lots of developers can much more easily write blockchain-based decentralized apps on this layer. And that then means, like we said earlier on, the the window of opportunity for average users to use the benefits of these decentralized apps without knowing they're using a decentralized app or caring or knowing that they're using a blockchain suddenly becomes possible. So that's got to be our number one. So in Bitcoin, it uses a, a proof of work system. So it literally, you have to prove you've done work in order to get the reward. And that generally means using all your computing power to find a rare number before anyone else and then you get the Bitcoin reward, right? So that you're buying energy, basically betting it, right? In order to find this rare number and, and gain the reward. And hopefully you earn more than you spend to turn a profit. Whereas in EOS, it uses a fundamentally different way of creating new coins and coming to consensus. Instead of proof of work, it uses something called delegated proof of stake. So instead of proving that you've done work for the network, you prove that you have a stake in the network, which basically means proving that you own tokens in the network, right? So basically you have ownership, a part ownership of one of these, the actual network itself, like we said earlier about the decentralized autonomous organization. So everyone that owns Bitcoins is essentially a shareholder in the Bitcoin company, if you like. So same with EOS. The reason this, back to the ICO though, in a delegated proof of stake system, what you don't want, absolutely you must avoid, is having one, two, or a very small group of people that have a disproportionate number of the tokens. Because in a delegated proof of stake system, it's delegated, meaning you don't mine the coins, right? The people that produce the blockchain, they're elected by the token holders. So if you end up in a situation in a delegated proof of stake system, where you have say one person that controls 50 or owns 50% of all the tokens, they have 50% of the voting power on the entire network. They can then just vote in whichever miners or block producers they want, and they can just manipulate everything. So the way a delegated proof of stake system is supposed to work, ideally, is that everyone in the community has an equal stake, an equal number of tokens, and then can elect who they want to be block producers based on what value those block producers are going to provide to the marketplace and then they get voted in and they're the ones that are allowed to produce blocks just like a miner. So the way that's going to work is anyone who wants to be a, uh, a block producer in EOS, they campaign just like a politician. They say, this is what I will do for the EOS network to improve the value, make sure it's secure and so on. And hundreds and hundreds of, of um, people who have the expertise do this and then all the shareholders, the people who have a stake, they look at the proposals and go, I like, I like what you're doing there. You're going to build this decentralized app or this security thing or that or the other. So they all compete, these block producers, and then the ones that have the most votes, the top 20 that have the most votes, they're the ones that get to produce the blocks and they're the ones that get rewarded for producing the blocks, right? So back to the ICO. So now we've set all that up. If they did a normal ICO where they said, right, it's 30 days, you can buy as many tokens as you want. On this date, go. 
And that meant someone who, could, who was a billionaire could just run in, buy half the tokens up, and have 50% control of the network. The whole thing wouldn't work. The whole thing wouldn't work. No one would want to participate in that system. It's clearly rigged, right? So by doing this thing where they basically split the, the ICO into 350 days, where they have basically a mini ICO every day, this was how they would ensure that anyone who wanted to have a stake in the network would have an opportunity to get some tokens. So it would avoid this thing where the ICO sells out in 24 hours and three people end up owning all the tokens. No one would want to participate in that network and the whole thing just would not work. So EOS relies on a broader distribution as possible of the tokens. So the only way they could do that, or the way they decided to do that, was to split it up into almost like a year's worth, which would provide an opportunity for everyone to hear about it, for everyone to get themselves some, some cryptocurrency, and then everyone to get some of the EOS tokens, right? Just nice and steady to make sure as many people as possible can get a stake so that when the network launches for real, we'll have, can we have a fair election and the real block producers can be voted in by the community rather than a few power players.